Good morning guys, it's Blackie. Okay, today we're going to be talking about shooting shot in a cap and ball revolver. So, let's get started. What is the object of the game here is to put fine bird shot into the chamber of a percussion revolver for use as a snake load or up close varmint load. Okay. Many, many, many of you have requested this from me and I'll be honest, I've been hesitant to, to do it uh, because it it's a more advanced technique and it's something that you have to be very aware of okay so like I just said in a recent video on snakes and I will point put the link of this right up there you don't ever shoot right next to your foot because it's not just the shot or the ball coming out it's the explosive gases so if you're too close to your body that explosive gas can be very detrimental just like here at the cylinder gap, you don't ever put your hand beside it because it'll cut you to bone, that high pressure gas coming out. So we don't want to shoot next to us. And there are individuals that I know with modern shot that have shot themselves in the foot because I was aiming right there, that far away from their foot. There's a spread pattern. So look at my video of where it's safe and apply it to this. Okay? Next. What we're going to be doing is creating a shot column within the percussion revolver chamber. Now, you have a very limited chamber capacity on a cabin ball cylinder. And I need to have, if I make more powder, I have hardly any shot. And if I go the other way, then I've got not enough power and too much shot. So you're going to have to play with it. What I recommend for a target to test it, when you think you got it dialed in, go get a standard baking potato. Okay, It's dense and it's mostly water and it's packed tight. Snakes are not snot, uh, soft. Uh, they're actually solid tubes of muscle, dense and tough. They have to be to do their job. So it's got to be strong enough to penetrate that. And I found a good old baking potato is the best test of this. So get one that seems to be functioning well, it seems to be patterning like you want, and then try it by putting a baking potato out there at you know, 10 feet and shoot it and see how much it does. If it penetrates deeply and goes into it, you're good. If it just bounces off the top, you don't have, you've got too much power or not enough shot or vice versa. Okay, but that's sort of like the, the final field test, that's how you test it. Now, the components that we're gonna need are you can go top dog and go get a pair of punches. I got these for Harbor Freight. It came in an entire kit. And the kit was like eight bucks for like six punches. For the 44 caliber, I am using 7 sixteenths. For the 36 caliber, I am using a 3 eighths inch punch. Now, the material you're gonna punch out, I like to use the cardboard from soda boxes because it's a waxed cardboard. It makes it a little stiffer, a little rigid, and it holds up better when firing. It's not as atmospherically, you know. So if it's a humid day, the box don't be turned soggy, you know what I mean? It helps. Now once you cut it out, you're going to end up this. Just a little circle of cardboard. I'm going to use one thickness. Now my loading procedure is going to be powder, two, I say again, two cards. Seat them all the way down. Then I'm going to use a dowel or something or a stick and shove them, make sure they're fully down as far as they go because the rammer of our revolvers does not go all the way to the bottom. It's designed to go X mount deep in there, right? So when it stops, it may not be all the way to the bottom, and we do not want an air gap. So we want to shove it down there, and then we'll make sure it's all the way down. Okay? Once that is all the way down, and just a ink pen to tap it, tap it, tap it, to get it in there. And I'll show you in a minute how to get it started. We're going to actually do this. Just This is a preemptive. Okay? Once we get it tap, 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 and get it all the way down in there, now we're going to add the shot on top. Fill it to the top, and then we're going to use the rammer to compress it. This forces the shot to kind of stick together and kind of uh, wedge outward and add tension. So it's not just sitting in there. It's actually forced in there, and those pieces are kind of tightly locked together. This keeps it when you fire the chamber next to it, they don't just blow out. 
okay, the shockwave. It helps lock them together. And then we're going to put another card on top of it, and then we're going to compress that down. So, let me get started, and we'll load one right quick. Okay, let me show you how to start it. We're going to do this before we go on. I have not put powder or anything in here yet. You're going to take your little wad that you've cut out, okay? Here's how you're going to put it in. You're going to put it in sideways, just like that. You're going to put it in and get it started until it kind of sits in there like that. And then you're going to push it over and use remember. that So it turns crossways in the board and has equal tension all the way down. And then it pushes it down. If you try to put it at the top and just shove it in top, it rolls the edges when you hit it with a rammer, and instead of it being in, it's kind of bowed up around the rammer. When you get to the bottom, it'll just come right back out. I want it tensioned all the way around. So again, take it, set it in the hole, then push it sideways and squeeze it down. Okay? Okay, how much powder? In a 44 caliber, I do about 20, 22 grains. It just depends how well it compresses, how compressible your powder is. If it's Pyrodex, I do 22. If it's um, black, then I'll do it slightly differently because of it. And all you're going to be doing is filling the chamber about halfway and then compressing it. Now for this operation, I'm going to use my old cylinder. This is a uh, shallow my 61 Navy McCullough, but I have this old original type cylinder that I like for this because this cylinder's got a bad ding up here and it doesn't shoot accurately because of the chamber, so I use it for shot. I can load five cham four chambers with accurate loads and that dinged up one becomes my shot chamber or my empty whenever my hammer's down, you know. So, let's get right here. And we're going to put our powder charge in. Just like that, give her a tap to settle it down. And we're going to take our wad, do it like I said, stick it down in there, get it started so it's flat across. And I'm going to take a second one, start it in there, put it down. Whoop, whoop, she slipped. You're going to learn how to do this, it's kind of fiddly. Yeah, got it out. Put it in there push it away from you and then lean down toward you. Now I'm going to take the rammer and I'm going to center it up and push it just like that and that will flatten it out all the way down as far as it goes. Now I know that is not completely down. So now I'm going to take my little rammer. Now I'm going to be using this punch. If you use a pen, stick, whatever. I'm just going to take it just like that. And now I'll rotate out here where I can make sure. Different angle. Yeah, just like that. Now that's all the way down. Now I need to fill up that chamber was shot. just like that. Now once it is, rotate it under the rammer and give her a good hard ram. That'll compress everything down in there. Now I take my next wad. Same way, you'll have a little lip now. Stick it in there and this one you got to kind of, oops, that's not the one I want. There we go. You want to push it in there and kind of push it. Hook the far edge, far edge, and then push it down like that. Okay? That's the name of the game here. It's going to be fiddly. I'm going to just be straight up with you. And once you get it, rotate it underneath and ram it home. And that's it. Now, I've already loaded the other chamber, so you're going to notice that. So there you see. It's nice and flush across, and it's a good deal down in there. Could I have gone more powder? Could I cut? Yes, I could have. 
but it's really in real life not that big a deal. Okay. Now, that's some down to the chamber. When you load a chamber, you put the powder in, you put the two wads in, then you're going to pour, flatten it down to the bottom. Now you're going to add your shot. Now you're going to add your second wad on top, your cap wad, and you're going to pull it down. Then you're going to turn the gun upside down and jiggle it to make sure that some piece of that little bitty shot didn't drop down in the other chamber next to it. And it's plugging up your touch hole. Lessons learned. Okay? Now, let me get set up and we'll shoot this and talk about it. Okay, now we're going to use this as a target because it's got the snake shape on it just for a reference point. Now, anytime you're going to be doing this, if at all possible, always wear eye protection just in case. Okay, small pellet bouncing. Okay, just be safe. So, let's see how it does. Okay, range to right here is five yards. Let's see how we do. Pretty good. Okay, now you can see, turn this around where I can see me. About a hand span. There's pellets from all the way down here. About the size of a, say a Frisbee is what it did. But there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 hits in that. That's pretty good. So, relatively quick and easily, we have created a shot load to use in a cap and ball revolver. Now, you're going to need to do a little bit of research because this is yours, okay? You may want to add a little more powder with a little less shot, a little more shot, a little less powder. You're only going to get this by kind of dialing it in. You may want to change powders and go to 4F or go to 777 or etc. until you find the velocities you want. Number one, it has to be safe and stay in position. That's what all the cards do and everything else. I ram it home and I typically carry just the first up when I'm going to be loading it like this loaded with shot. The rest of the cylinder will be loaded with standard round ball. If I need to shoot a target with a round ball, I just simply index up, cock it twice, go to that, or rotate the cylinder. On firing, it should not dislodge the shot cartridge. In, in the method I've talked about, I've often shot two or three cylinders worth of round in a rabbit hunt without having to use that shot cartridge. The shot cartridge is always the first one up, so that in case I encountered a rabbit or uh, encountered a snake or something like that, we're rabbing hunting in the fall. And so that's why I did it. The 36 is the same idea, but definitely you're going to want to use 4F, 3F, or something to get as much horsepower out of it because you just don't have that much chamber capacity. Hope this uh, works for you guys. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. Until next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.